Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to wait um, just a minute for a few more people to be able to come on. Okay. Hi, I'm Shoshana Ort, and I'm a licensed clinical social worker. And um, today, tonight, I'm talking about anxiety and medication. And some people might be wondering, like, how I can be talking about medication, because as a social worker, I am not allowed to prescribe medication. Um, and I, I can't, um, I don't necessarily, I wouldn't have the, I, I wouldn't feel like I wouldn't necessarily have the medical um, background to get someone to stop taking medication and someone was taking medication and I was working with them and they decided that they wanted to take to stop taking the medication I would tell them to work with their medical provider who was prescribing the actual medication but the reason why I decided to um, still put out a live on anxiety and medication is because a lot of people think that medication is uh, a lot of people have their own views on what medication is. Some people think that medication is a really bad thing and it's a sign of weakness. Um, other people think that um, medication is um, is like an end all be all, and that means that you can use medication without anything else. And um, I'm here to explain what medication um, actually does and when it can be helpful and, and some of the side effects that it can have and when it can be, when it might be, when people might wanna actually avoid it. Um, and the reason why I got trained in this and learned about this is because I felt like it would help me be a better therapist, which I have found has been incredibly useful when I'm working with different people who are experiencing anxiety and either trying to decide if their anxiety, the medication that they're on is the right medication or the right dosage, or if they should start taking medication or people want to be weaning off of it. It's very helpful to know this information um, about what the medication is actually doing. So I want to try to um, dissolve some myths and help people understand really what the medication is doing inside of inside and why it's being prescribed for for um, people who are experiencing a lot of anxiety and depression. A lot of anxiety medications are the same, very similar to antidepressants. So a lot of times um, a provider will will um, prescribe a, an antidepressant when when someone is really experiencing more anxiety and vice versa. Like they'll, they'll um, also prescribe something that works more with anxiety when someone is dealing with depression because anxiety and depression are very very interconnected so um we're gonna talk a little bit more about that also in this live tonight so um in general though another thing that people have to realize is that when people are struggling with anxiety um i've said this in in my talks before but anxiety is not a a, um, it's not something wrong with the brain. It's not a malfunctioning in the brain and something that shouldn't be there. Anxiety is something that every single person should have to some degree. Now, obviously, when it becomes a debilitating uh, factor in people's lives, this is something that needs to be taken care of. But, but when someone takes, when we take medication for something, that usually means that it has a diagnosis of something that should not be there and is there and that is actually not what anxiety is there are people who are uh, born without a certain that there's something a part of their brain that's actually missing and they therefore do not have anxiety and without anxiety they do not know that there's any danger in anything that they ever do so they would not know that there is danger in touching a hot stove or that there is danger when there's a car coming or something 
an animal coming right at them and they would not know to run away from that because the the part of their brain that's telling them that something is actually dangerous is um, not working. So we we want our anxiety to be there. Just the problem is is when it gets so exacerbated and so so out of control that it's taking us um, away from uh, reaching our actual goals. But we don't want anxiety to go away completely. So what happens when we are taking medications? Now there are different types of medications and the main ones that I'm going to focus on um, today are something called SSRIs um, that stands for um, serotonin um, reuptake inhibitors and SNRIs. And those are, that's one category of medicine, medications for, that are usually used for anxiety. Um, and the other type that I'm going to focus on, there are other ones that I'm going to, I'll just mention at the end of this talk, but I'm not going to focus on them as much. But the other big type that I'm going to be focusing on in this talk tonight are benzodiazepines. Um, and what each of those do and when they can be useful and, and what the advantages and disadvantages are of taking medication and and what medication can do and what it can't do. So let's start actually off with the limitations of any medication. Any medication versus actually therapy, which is that any medication that you're going to take, any anybody's going to take, is not going to make permanent changes in the brain or in the body. Meaning that if someone is going to be taking medication to calm down their anxiety, it will be helping them for the time that they're taking the actual medication, but it doesn't make lasting change. So as soon as they stop taking that medication, then the those the the stuff that they were feeling, let's say it was something that was calming them down, is no longer going to be there. So then that means that it could come right back to where it was. Whereas when someone goes to therapy and learns the skills to be able to deal or re deal with their anxiety or rewire their their brain in order to deal with anxiety better um, and the anxious thoughts or the the stuff the stimuli that's coming into their brain on a constant basis in a better way, then they're able to take those skills and use them forever and ever. So that's a much longer term um, positive effect and solution. Um, the other thing that um, SS the that the uh, medications cannot do is that they cannot target a specific part of the brain. They will just they go in and they will they will do whatever they do, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But they're going to do whatever they do to wherever they can find. Whereas when you're in therapy and you want to um, focus on one specific memory or one specific fear that you have, then you can actually do that in therapy because through exposure therapy, because you're able to focus on one specific um, thought process or something like that. That's through CBT. But that, that doesn't happen actually through um, medication. So um, the, that, those are the two of the negative sides of, of um, taking medic of medication that they can't they can't really do um versus therapy but what actually what therapy what a medication can do is are other things that I'm going to talk about right now so SSRIs um SSRIs and SNRIs are two different types of medications that are in one in the same category and they are they ta they're targeting the serotonin in the brain which is uh, a part of your brain that is coming into the um, helping your brain calm down a little bit. And the medications usually that people take that are under SSRI and SNRIs are Lexapro, Celexa, Prozac, Paxil, and Zoloft. Those, those are all SSRIs. And peop, uh, the medications under SNRIs are Cymbalta, Effexor, Pristique, and Fetsima, which is an, I don't hear that one as commonly with the, um, with the people that I work with. I don't hear that one as commonly, but... Cymbalta and effects are, are are much more common, and those are SNRIs. And um, what is happening with the um, SSRIs and the SNRIs is that they are actually affecting the cortex, and they are helping um, change the way that you're thinking a little bit during the time that you're actually taking the medication at that exact point. So they don't actually calm you down, the the um, the SSRIs. They don't actually calm you down. They actually, if you heard the talk that I give, gave about the different um, 
pathways to anxiety, they're going to affect the, the cortex part of the brain, which is, um, they're, they're just, they're just helping the, the neurotransmitters in the brain be a little bit more flexible. So they are, um, what they're going to do is that when, when someone comes in with some information, let's say they're, they're, uh, a, um, a, a, a piece of information is coming in, let's just say uh, a stimuli is coming in, like their heart is racing very, very fast, or they just saw something that could have made them normally panic very, very um, fast, uh, the, the SSRI or the SNRI will just will just cause it to, the brain to um, be more flexible in what it's thinking. So in therapy, if you're able to take the SSRIs or the SNRIs during therapy and learn how to um, change the brain in order to think more positively saying like, Oh, that's just a coat or that's just my heart is racing because I just ran or that was something that I wasn't expecting instead of saying, Oh my gosh, I'm having a heart attack or, Oh my gosh, that was a robber or the, the right way where the cortex would right away make it, um, seem like it was a very scary thing that was coming up. Um, the SSRIs or the SNRIs are going to help more with the flexibility of the brain. So together, the 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 if you're someone's taking SSRIs and S or SNRI an SSRI or an SNRI any of those medications meaning any of the ones that I I mentioned mentioned just now Lexapro Celexa Prozac Paxil Zoloft or any of the SNRIs like Cymbalta Effexor um, Prisic or Fitzema any of those those are gonna actually um, they're going to create more of the um, neuroplasticity in the brain, which means that the brain is going to be more flexible and anything that's going to happen, you can change how you're going to react towards that. And you can, um, with therapy, you can actually have very positive effects of, of how this um, changes how much anxiety anyone has at any given moment. So a good way to think about it actually is... Um, to think of it as the brain being like a garden. And the, the brain has um, roots, branches, and other stuff like flowers growing from it. And these medications don't change your actual thoughts, but they do allow you to change your thoughts more easily. So it's kind of like putting fertilizer in your brain. And when you fertilize your anything, everything grows more. So the weeds, the grass, the flowers, everything is going to grow more when you're actually putting fertilizer fertilizer in it. But your job is to decide what you want to weed out and what you have to you have to decide what your thoughts are. And once you do that, you're able to um, keep continuing to try to do that. And then after a while, you're able to actually do that on your own. So that's the positive effect of, of um, doing therapy together with medication. If you're going to do an SNRI or an SSRI medication together with the, the um, therapy is that it's like you're fertilizing it and putting positive things in there while you're fertilizing it. So you're constantly putting more fertilizer in it and you're putting also positive um, coping mechanisms and positive skills in that, in that, in there at the same time. And when you're doing that, your people are actually able to get off of the SSRIs or the SNRIs after a while um, because they have, they have short term while they were taking that medication, increasing the, um, the, the neuroplasticity that means the like the flexibility in your actual brain and you're able to make longer lasting effects but if you um, changes but if you are not going to if you're just going to be taking the actual medication without doing therapy then you're just increasing by taking um, an SSRI or an SNRI you're just increasing the the flexibility in your brain in the neurotransmitters in in things that are constantly causing you to feel anxious or think anxious thoughts. And um, once you come off of them, you'll be in the same exact spot as you were before. So if you're going to be taking SSRIs or SNRIs, I would strongly suggest and, and encourage you to be doing therapy at the same time because it's not necessarily very helpful if you're going to just be doing the taking the medication on its own because it's just expanding and letting the the um during that time that you're taking the the medication it's just expanding the flexibility during that time but as soon as you stop taking it unless you're going to want to continue taking it forever um which some people want to do but it's also you're not getting the full effect of it because you're not really also at the same time 
putting the skills that you want to be putting into it at the same at, while you're getting the medication that you're taking. So I would strongly suggest anybody who is taking who is is considering taking SSRIs or SNRIs to um, do therapy, take do therapy and and go through the process and learn the skills and learn what your your brain and body needs in order for it to be able to cope with the anxious um, thoughts and feelings that are coming up on a constant basis. Um, so the the thing about SSRIs is that it has a delayed um, it's a delay in how long it's going to take to actually take effect in in your in your brain. So a lot of people don't feel any sense of relief even in the in the flexibility of their brain um, for two to four weeks, which is very very hard for people who are struggling with a very very high level of anxiety. So what do people do when they're struggling with a very, very high level of anxiety when they feel like they're not able to manage? A lot of times people end up going to the next type of medication that I'm going to bring on, um, which is the benzodiazepines. And benzodiazepines um, include Xanax, Clonopin, Valium, Ativan, um, those are the main, they, those are the main ones that go under, um, benzodiazepines. And in short, basically what benzodiazepines do is that they basically inhibit the neurons, making themselves less likely to fire. And what you're basically doing when you're, when you're, um, inhibiting the neurons like that is you're basically putting your neurons to sleep. And you're, in other words, you're putting your amygdala to sleep. And that actually feels really, really good and calming to people with a very, very high level of anxiety. Because what's happening is that any time that someone is going through their day and they, if they have a very high level of anxiety, everything is making them anxious and they're just on such high alert and they, people could be not sleeping and they could be, um, really, really having a very, very hard time, um, with this high level of anxiety and a benzodiazepine will just put the amygdala to rest. It will just put it to sleep. Um, which is very, very, very helpful the, for people who are struggling with a very high level of anxiety. The downside to taking benzodiazepines is that when you put your amygdala to sleep, their number one is that therapy is not going to be as effective. It's very, very hard to do therapy with an amygdala that's asleep because um, in order to um, rewire your actual anxious brain, you need to fire to rewire. That means that you need to actually bring up the anxiety level in order for your brain to learn that this is something that it needs to overcome. But if you are putting it to sleep, then you're, 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 you're bringing in an outside way, like an outside source to put this to sleep. And your brain is learning that a, it doesn't have to overcome this because it could be done by an outside thing. And that it's really, is something that's very scary for it to over, to overcome because you had to bring something else in to, in order to get rid of it. So by putting it to sleep, you're teaching your brain that, um, this is something that's too scary and dangerous for you to actually overcome, which makes it even scarier and more like it becomes even a more a, a fearful thing for the brain to actually overcome when when you would go off of them. But the other thing is that in order for it to fire, in order for you to rewire your your anxious brain, you need to fire. You need to actually bring up the anxious the anxious things, which is actually very uncomfortable for people. Which is another reason why I meant to say this actually with one of the downsides to taking SSRIs and SNRIs is that a lot of times when the neurons are more flexible and you'll start to bring in more of these anxious things in order to rewire your brain in that way because they're more flexible, a lot of people will feel more anxious on the right on the onset of this, which is very, very scary for people, which is why sometimes people will go to benzodiazepines. The problem, another problem with benzodiazepines is that they're very, very addictive and they, um, people with in as short as two weeks after taking them for two weeks can start to feel, um, withdrawal. And once someone's on them for more than two weeks, it's very, very hard to get them off to go to cold turkey. I would never, ever tell someone to stop taking any benzodiazepine cold turkey. Um, they would need to consult with the medical professionals. So I just want to put that out there that if you 
are taking benzodiazepines do not take this video and say oh i'm just gonna go cold turkey off of my benzodiazepines do not do that you will have serious withdrawal um and you would have to taper off of it very very slowly um and a lot of people find that very very difficult because they have found it to be it, it's it's it has addictive um of uh, parts in it, the actual medication. But the other thing is that it felt was it felt very very good to have your amygdala sleep because it wasn't reacting to all of these different stimuli that were happening. And then suddenly, when you take that away, it's going to start responding in a very strong way again. So um, and the other positive part about benzodiazepines is that they work so incredibly fast people start feeling a um a difference in their level of anxiety within half an hour which is a very 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 big difference between half an hour and two to four weeks meaning that the the ssris take two to four weeks to start kicking in sometimes two weeks so if you compare the two of them on the timelines um you can't really compare them because there one is a half hour where you start feeling immediate results and the other one you're you have to really be patient in order to actually see um some sort of um, relief. So sometimes when people are struggling with like intense severe anxiety and they're coming into therapy, they might be um, suggested to tur to start off on benzodiazepines on a low dose and then slowly taper off of that while they start taking the SSRIs and then the SSRI is able to kick in by the time they are able to get off of the benzo and then they don't have to be completely addicted to the benzodiazepine and and then they're able to also um, have their, their, um, their, the, the neurons in their brain to be more, more flexible. So, um, we're running out of time, but I did, I did want to say that there are just, a, there are a few other, um, medications, um, buce, um, buce, buce perone, and there's also, um, like Z drugs, which are, um, um, they, they basically will put people to sleep. Those are not as common in the, um, anxiety medications like that are that are being given out as commonly by doctors um and there's also beta blockers which i'm not going to even spend so much a lot of time right now talking about but just just so you realize that the reason why i was putting this this little um this live out there tonight was that there are different medications and some of them are very very useful for people when they're trying to overcome their anxiety and and deal with anxiety but remember that when you are um when you are taking medication, it's really, really important for you to know what the advantages are, what the side effects are, what the disadvantages of them are, are they addictive? And um, I would strongly encourage you to ask your provider before taking these medications, is this a, a benzodiazepine? Is this something that's addictive? Is this something that I can get out of, is off of? Is this something that um, I'm gonna need to be on forever? Or how long is this? Or do I wanna be on this forever? What exactly is this doing in my brain? Because um, it actually helps with the change and the ability w with to change within the therapeutic process. If people know what they're doing with their medications, what the medications are actually doing in their in their brains and um, what they want from them. Because if someone's taking an SSRI and expecting it to just like block out everything, um, that's not gonna happen because that's not what the purpose of that dr that, that medication is. Um, but there there are times and places for, for these medications and um, taking these medications are is not a sign of weakness. If someone is able to figure out what medication they need at any given time, then that's actually a very big, that's, that's actually a wonderful thing that they were able to actually figure that out to be able to help them um, uh, thrive and reach their goals. So I would encourage you to um, look into the different types of medications. If the medica if you are taking medication for anxiety and you think that it's either not working or it's not the right amount or, or you are on a benzodiazepine and you feel like this is something that you want to look into and you, you want to... Um, understand more about, I would strongly encourage you to either ask your therapist if, if you have one and see how you can work the medication that you're taking into the therapy that you're doing so that they can work hand in hand and you can be seeing the results that you want to see on a, in a, on a fast, on a faster, on a, in a faster way and in a way that you want them to see. So I wish you the best of luck. Good night.